Life gets really difficult as a fur trader. Since the Aboriginals now rely on us for supplies, for fur, we have had a lot of responsibilities. Hello, my name is Henry Kenneth, and I will tell you the adventures of being a fur trader. First of all, I came here for one sole reason, fish sea, as many others came here for that same sole reason. But I quickly switched over to the fur trade. The fur trade is an activity that drew the French further into the continent. I came in contact with the Aboriginals who were willing to trade us furs for supplies we have a large but limited amount of. The supplies were usually metal pots and knives and things the Aboriginals were really new to. The supplies were usually metal pots and knives and things the Aboriginals were really new to. They gave me and my crew beaver furs, which are used to make hats. I have mine at home, but they are used to make beaver hats, which are surprisingly demanded in Europe. My trading post uh, is located shortly before the border of New France. I have heard of the story before I came here in the early 1600s about the first fur traders. The Dutch saw us trade for furs, so they made some posts in Manhattan hoping for similar reasons as to ours. Us Europeans had a strong sense of dislike for those men, thus creating an intense rivalry between us and the Dutch. The French crown said that they would give us control over the fur trade. The French crown saw all this and said he would grant us control over the fur trade. For in favor, we must help the Jesuits convert Aboriginals to Christianity. After the Dutchess were dealt with, the fur trader were making were back to making good profits until some years later. Some years later after arriving, the Ministry of Marine or Ministre de la Marine responsible for colonial affairs released three new corporations the West Indies Plantation Trade, the Fur Trade, and the African Slave Trade to the new nearly newly formed Crown Corporation. I mean all permanent residents of New friends are allowed to trade furs, but they must give it in a free market or give it on a company with a price fixed by the Ministry de Marie. Meaning that I was not allowed to trade with the Aboriginal. A few years passed and Colbert, a French politician, was to pull out the trade and review the cone system. The cone were licenses that allowed you to trade, and yearly 25 were to be issued by the governor. We had hoped the Canadians would have impatiently, like us, waited for the licenses, but left, leaving 75 men short. But the new system did little to reduce men from trading. Most of them did it illegally, and the amount of beer fur of, of and the amount of beer fur that went to Montreal rise rapidly. In 1696, or two years ago, the Ministry of Marine saw this illegal activity and suspended all fur trading and to abandon all the French posts all over the New France. The governor and the intendant reacted forcefully, saying if we abandon all the posts, we would abandon all the Aboriginal people, and they would then go to the English, allying with them. New France would be doomed if that happened. Fortunately, we got the Ministry of Marine convinced that now he was happy to change the orders and make fur trading legal again, and the fur trade resumed. Now currently it is the year 1698, and the fur trade still stands strong.